D the Circle was the song we kind of set the tone for the album. Like whenever we got that, it was a mix of the synth and the uh, orchestra. And after that, mm. we kind of went back then and we added more synth to other songs that didn't have much before. And we did actually dial down quite a bit on the orchestra after that because yeah. there were songs. Because even songs like The Spell originally had a lot of orchestra and they ended up becoming more synth like as the album went on. Mm -hmm. And I think the circle really was the turning point in the writing of the album. Things like End of the World, even compared to the EP, ended up having a bit more of a modern synth sound. And that then influenced the writing of things like Eden Falls as well. Yeah, and no, I, I totally agree. Um, I think it was for me as well, it was a circle that I settled on a drum sound. Or, you know, sort of, I recorded them. I recorded it. it was, I think, one of the two or three songs on that album that I did in, you know, one session that I didn't have to go back and re record it. Mm. And it was, once I did that, I was like, this drum sound works for this song. I'm going to try and hit that on every other song. And I think the only song that doesn't really have the same kind of drum sound is probably The Spell, because that's just in its own league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's by far the best sound I've ever got out of my drums. <laughs> It was interesting whenever we were recording vocals for The Circle for me because um, I kind of had the idea then to just sort of do the little Aunt Tiffany part, to record the little Aunt Tiffany part in the chorus. But I know what's good about the way that we record stuff. Um, sometimes it's almost like, it's not, it's not like the song is fully written at the demo stage. It continues to get written a little bit more whenever we're recording the demos because we'll have ideas like, Oh, well, what if we try this? And you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that was one of the things that sort of came up, and it was like, yeah, that's cool. Let's keep that in. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely a lot of experimenting with ideas in the studio. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, it's one of the things that really changed from the demo as well. I think it was the drum part, where you know you sort of had the basic drums going in the demo, and then I pretty much turned that upside down <laughs> and record that in on the first day. Yeah, because yeah. to like pull back the curtain, the way it tends to be done is the guitars are written to very generic drum tracks. Then Michael write proper drum parts to them. Then we go back and re-record the guitars and everything to Mike's rewritten drums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I'll go so, to the, go back in the studio and record the drums five or six more times, and then I'm happy with them. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of, I'm kind of the same with the vocals though. I do that a wee bit too. Like we we'll record a demo and then I'll listen back to it like a week later and I'm like, oh, oh, let's mm, let's redo all of that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I do my guitars once and they're perfect. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> End of the World, it's one of the speedy tracks, it's one of the songs that was written for the EP. Yep. But it oh, wasn't. Jesus, yeah. That is quite <laughs> a song to play live. <laughs> yeah. um, the idea for that actually came from the original demos were, I think, Words Unspoken, Wild Hunt, and uh, Where the Stars Grow. Yeah. Then we saw Eelstorm in concert and decided we needed something more power metal. Mm. And we decided to write the most power metal song we could. Mm -hmm. And originally it wasn't even that fast. But a uh, drummer we had playing the live shows originally, uh, Cameron, he mm -hmm. suggested that we sped things up a little bit. And it just became a non-stop barrage of speed and uh, yeah. solos. <laughs> Yeah, it's got the, yeah, it's got the guitar and keyboard interplay. Like the, the original version of it, in the EP had lots of harpsichord and things like that, more traditional power metal. But with the album, we went back and reworked it a fair bit. Uh, made the vocal lines a bit more aggressive and made it more synth-driven. Mm -hmm. It's funny just whenever you mentioned that uh, that eelstorm. <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't know that you were going and you didn't uh -huh. know that I was going and then uh -huh. <laughs> I was like really drunk at the end of the night and I was like dude I was like dancing with my friends I can't remember what it was but we were like 
doing like the like arms like links thing, like running around mm-hmm. a circle, and I just caught like you just looking at me like, and I didn't know you that well at this point, and I was like, oh, I'm out of the band. Do you think I'm an idiot? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just running over and be like, oh, John, hello, how are you? And you're like, oh, you're having a good time, aren't you? <laughs> well, was that all by the way? Huh? It's like- I didn't join until like the start of 2019, so when was all that happening? Oh, flip. That must have been... February 2018? Yeah, oh, that's right, what it was. Okay. Yeah, that was good. Good while ago. <laughs> that was when I was still living down south. Mm-hmm. Flip right now. So Mike, that's I, your favourite song to play live? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. Um, <laughs> the funny thing, Sanctuary's next in the album, isn't it? It is. Yeah, and it's at the same tempo, and we generally play those two back to back anyway. Uh, <laughs> so it turns out to be quite the marathon for me because there's a lot of double picks of that, you know, and it's not an easy tempo to play at for the extended period of time that those two songs are. <laughs> it's definitely good to work out though. Uh, I'll have to give it that. <laughs> Sanctuary was like the last one that I re-recorded the drums, wasn't it? it was that was the last... It. That was... I think that was the last re-recording that you did for the drums for the album, but that song was actually written before the first EP came out. Mm-hmm. Right. But we just didn't have a final arrangement for it then, like we were actually reworking it quite a bit, like we did it live a few times with a slightly different arrangement for it. Mm. Like the whole... We like the choir and everything in the final recording wasn't in the original. And it There's a bridge more, part as well. Yeah, it became more it wasn't always there. dynamic and different as the recording went on. That's probably the song, one of the songs that changed most between the original demo and the final recording. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I remember when I first started learning it for live playing, like when I. Uh, I think it was the first couple of Metal to the Masters gigs that we did. Uh, mm-hmm. The demo that I was sent didn't even have vocals or melody in it. And like, <laughs> each progress, each demo that I was sent had like a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably the one we recorded the most time. It's because we had recorded a rough version of it before the we did it live the first few times. And then we kind of yeah. went back and changed it more. And then as the arrangement changed, we kept going back and re-recording and re-recording. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's it's a fun one. It's very rhythmically interesting because it's mm. th- it's on three four. Yeah. yeah, it's got that Himiola thing in it where it goes between three four and six eight, which is mm-hmm. a bit of fun to play actually. Yeah, it's funny. I actually I didn't like it at the start because I didn't. Um, I, I'm I'm not. I'm, I just wasn't used to. Um, wasn't used to saying anything, I guess, that's in that kind of, uh, we call it, 3-4, as you were saying. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, like, the way that the phrasing is on the chorus, I always kind of felt like I was trying to catch my breath nearly, because it's like, there's like no pause between any of the any of the, um, the lines. It's just like, one after the other, I guess, is kind of the only way I can really describe it, but... I know, then you kind of get, yeah, you get into the rhythm of it, and then you get used to it, basically. I don't know. At first, I was just it's like... De- <laughs> it's definitely a very uh, tricky song. Like, it's one of the more kind of prog-influenced prog tracks on the album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because like, in terms of like doing it live, um, the way that the, um, the way the melody goes, you know, it's kind of like slightly, it's in the lower register and then all of a sudden there's a really high note, but oh, it's yeah. not like a sustained high note. So for <laughs> doing it live, I sometimes get a bit worried because I'm like, oh, I want to make sure that I get to the right note, you know, and because I know it's different whenever you're doing a high note and it's like the end of like a phrase and it's a sustained high note, there's a bit more build up to it. But this was just kind of like, it, it was like, it's like, I know it's kind of like, like vocal gymnastics because you're kind of going up and then dying again. <laughs> but. <laughs> I don't know. No, it is. It's a fun one. I've, I've come to appreciate it. <laughs> I think 
on a similar note to that now, the next track, Echoes, is another very uh, rock influence track, and this was the final song written for the album, I think. Yes. It was the final song. It was the last one we finalized the arrangement of, because it kind of went back and forth on it quite a bit. But yeah. the end of Curtain Arts, really good. Yeah, I was, I was uh, a little bit pedantic about the ending of it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, lots of back and forth to get it to flow because it's got lots of really like it's probably the song that goes through the most different sections if that makes sense like it's, it's kind of you know very folk riff at the start and then it goes into like uh, a kind of electronic section gets complex rhythm and then big chorus but it's a bit hard to jigsaw together the final arrangement of it and still make it the kind of as accessible as we wanted but still mm. maintaining all the different elements of it. Yeah, that electronic section was actually a lot of fun to work with because, uh, like, initially, you sort of had the same thing as Sanctuary going on in the demo where you just had the kick playing, I think it was a quarter note or something, you know, just to keep a steady mm -hmm. pulse. And I sort of heard that, I was like, I don't want that, you know, two songs in a row. What can I do to make it interesting? And I was like, these guys don't know what's coming, you know? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna yeah, stick cause, electric drums in this, you know. <laughs> yeah, because you, you didn't tell anybody that was coming until you sent the, the, your first recording off. He said, I had, I had a strange idea that was here and listened to it and went, oh, God, Jesus, that's like Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, personally, I wasn't even sure if that song was going to work until the end, but now it's, I think it's one of the strongest songs in the album. <laughs> yeah. It was actually a lot of fun because, um, the drums are actually, I played that acoustically on the kit and I just fucked around with so many different effects just to see how can I make this sound interesting and what can I do to it to make it sound even more electronic, sort of, you know. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm glad that it turned out the way I hoped it would. It would have been quite disappointing otherwise. <laughs> I think it's not the one with the little, like, electronic drums at the start. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love. I yeah, I really enjoyed those. And whenever I first heard that bit stuck in, I was like, "Ooh, cause it's like a little bit of spice to the pot," you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what I was aiming for. Yeah. <laughs> yes, spicy pots. <laughs> 